The movie begins in a village called Kolkata in 1855 in India. A boy was peeking at his neighbor who was cooking, the boy named Nabhan, an orphan who likes sweets and music. On the same day, several travelers came across his village, singing a song. Nabhan, who saw the travelers, was happy, then he followed them. But the traveler told him to go home because they would continue their journey to another village. As a sign of gratitude for entertaining his village, Nabhan made food from clay for the traveler, who had no money. The traveler laughed, seeing his innocence, then prayed for him that one day he could provide proper food to all who were in trouble. The scene then changes and shows Nabhan, now 20 years old, attending his nephew's Thanksgiving event. He told his father's family that he would cook for the guests attending his nephew's Thanksgiving event. Although initially doubtful, his father's family still allowed him to do that. He preferred to work in the kitchen rather than as a farmer or fisherman, like other youths at that time. When he was in the kitchen, Nabhan was about to put the shrimp into the vegetables, but the cook forbade him because no one had ever done what he did. But he ignored the cook and kept doing it because he was sure that the shrimp would make the food is getting better. The food was ready and then served to the guests. The guests apparently liked the food and were satisfied. His uncle introduced the cook to the guest, and unexpectedly, the guest gave the cook 500 rupees. It disappointed Nabhan because his uncle did not recognize the food he had made, even though all the guests enjoyed the new food. After the event, his uncle said that if there is no history of a man from their family's ancestors working in the kitchen, he said that Nabhan could work as a farmer or a fisherman as long as he didn't work in the kitchen, which is a woman's job. Nabhan, feeling unappreciated, decides to look for a cooking job elsewhere to earn money. Since then, Nabhan's father's family has broken their relationship with Nabhan and his mother. The scene changes and shows Nabhan and his mother having dinner, where his mother calms him and says that his father's family only wants to make Nabhan a respectable man. But, he was happy because he and his mother did not need to work voluntarily as servants at his father's family. The next day, Nabhan started looking for work at the market while saying that he could cook for the Thanksgiving event. Finally, he was accepted to work by a cake entrepreneur named Kalidas, who happened to need employees. Soon after, he was introduced to Kalidas' assistants named Mahesh and Heman, and started working there. While helping Heman, Nabhan said that the appearance of the wet cakes made by Kalidas looked normal, and he intended to change the cake recipe to make it more interesting. However, Heman scolded him and said he could experiment as he pleased if he had his own cake shop. Unlike Heman, Mahesh supports his idea, and without Kalidas knowing, he adds raisins to the wet cakes for sale. While Nabhan was guarding the shop, a girl named Kirad came, who was hiding in the shop. Knowing that she is the granddaughter of Mr. Bola, a respected family in the village, he served his cakes to Kirad. When she had eaten almost all the cakes sold, Kirad said that all the flavors of the cakes seemed mediocre and nothing special. The scene then changes, showing that Kalidas is angry because he knows his cake is given for free. He punishes all his employees by cutting their salaries. This makes Nabhan feel bad for Mahesh and Heman, so he decides to look for Kirad's home address to collect the money for the cake. When he got there, Nabhan saw several renting people at Mr. Bola playing music. Nabhan, who really likes music, approached them. Soon after, he was then offered to become a member by a girl named Curran, the band's vocalist. But he refused the offer because he was already working in a cake shop. Shortly after, Nabhan met with Kirad's mother and told her what had happened before. Finally, her mother gave Nabhan 1,000 rupees as compensation for her actions. At that time, he heard about Kirad's family problems. Apparently, 15-year-old Kirad will soon be married because Kirad's 14-year-old niece already has children. When Nabhan was about to return, Kirad stopped him and took back the money her mother gave him because she didn't want to pay for the cake that tasted ordinary. She continued to say that she would pay for all the cakes if he gave her one that tasted good. Then, Nabhan asked Kirad the taste of a delicious cake she wanted. She replied that a delicious cake is like a full moon. Eating it can make people who eat it forget all life's problems, even if only for a moment. Hearing this, Nabhan confidently said he would make her a cake like that. The scene changed. It seemed Nabhan was in the shop's kitchen making a cake dough made of flour and cheese. Unfortunately, the cake batter was destroyed when fried. He seemed so serious about working on cake dough for his own sake that he forgot about his duties as an employee at the cake shop. Soon after, Kalidas appears to scold Nabhan. Suddenly, he told Kalidas that he would make a new type of cake because the old type of cake tasted standard and ordinary. Kalidas was angry to hear his suggestion because the villagers already liked his cakes, so Kalidas didn't need a new kind of cake. Afterward, Kalidas told Nabhan to go to the queen's house from the upper caste to record the cake ordered. Queen said that she wanted to serve a dessert that her guests had never eaten. Nabhan agreed to her request without compromising on his boss, Kalidas. However, when he returned to the shop's kitchen, Nabhan was confused when he wanted to make a dessert that would be given to Queen. But when he saw Mahesh eating the leftover apple cider, he had an idea. He asked Mahesh to bring him any mango cider to mix with apple. The scene changed at the Queen's residence, showing Nabhan serving his homemade dessert to guests. The guests did not seem interested in dessert because they often ate mangoes. He said that he was ready to be punished if the taste of his dessert was disappointing. 
Soon after, the guests started to eat it, and it turned out that the dessert was made of mango dough with apple cider. They enjoyed the dessert like a child who was starving. They who had eaten the unique dessert praised the talent of Nobin. Seeing that, Queen seemed happy that her guests were satisfied. After that, Kalidas came to Nobin's house and fired him because he did not set the appropriate price on Queen, so Kalidas lost 5,000 rupees on the materials he had purchased. Kalidas said that Nobin is not suitable to be an entrepreneur and is more suitable to be a clown because he only makes customers happy and amazed without thinking about profit. Soon after, Nobin's uncles came and said that he was embarrassed. He insulted Nobin by saying he was a cursed child. That's why he killed his father before he was born. Unable to withstand the insult, Nobin's mother burst into tears and broke her piggy bank to pay for Kalida's losses. Soon after, his uncle said that he gave Nobin and his mother a week to leave their rented house. After the incident, Nobin continued to look for work in several shops, but unfortunately, none of the shops were willing to accept him as their employee. Having no choice, he is forced to work as a toilet cleaner. The next day, Nobin becomes the target of insults from the villagers who see him, and only Mahesh cries bitterly at his misfortune. On the other hand, Nobin's mother, who had just finished washing, was also insulted by other mothers, saying that they would be ashamed if they had a healthy son but only worked as a toilet cleaner. At night, Nobin's mother looked like she was crying and was about to do the unthinkable because she couldn't take the insults from the villagers anymore. Then, Nobin said he was forced to do the job because Kalidas had told all traders not to accept him. Hearing this, Nobin's mother, who still has money saved to pay the rent for the house, asks Nobin to focus on his goals. Then, he said he agreed to that but he did not have any resources to achieve his goal. The next day, Nobin tried to play music by practicing drums with Curran's group. He seemed fluent in playing the drums, making Kirab pay attention to him. While practicing drums, Mahesh came with good news. Apparently, Mahesh came with one of the Queen's guests the other day, Shandu, who wanted to work with Nobin. Shandu, who sells sweets at the market, wants Nobin to make him cakes to sell in his shop. Suddenly Mahesh said he wanted to quit Kalida's shop and join him. Hearing that, Nobin became excited again to make cakes. After a week, Nobin and his mother moved and decided to rent a house at the end of the village to get cheap rent. As time goes by, he always imagines the figure of Kirad when he is working and even when he is eating. Finally, Nobin dared to express his feelings to Kirad, and it turned out that she accepted it because she saw him as a good man. The scene then moves, showing someone from the upper caste giving the token money to order sweets at a Thanksgiving event. On the other hand, Nobin was very lucky because Kirad's parents accepted him as he was, so their wedding was held. On the first night, Nobin felt embarrassed because he still couldn't give Kirad a cake that resembled the full moon she wanted, so he was determined to keep looking for the right recipe to make a cake similar to the full moon for her. A few days later, many people gathered in front of Shandu's shop. Suddenly, a shop owner wanted to collect Shandu's shop rent because he had not paid rent for a year and a half. At the same time, a man from the upper caste threatened to report to the police if he didn't deliver his sweets order on time. This confused Nobin and Mahesh because they did not know this. While Shandu himself was drinking with his friends at the entertainment venue, Nobin, who knew his whereabouts, met him. Nobin looks sad and scared over what happened earlier, then tells him about it. But because they were drunk, they didn't believe what he said. Unexpectedly, a comfort woman named Madhu helps Nobin. She feels that the money from her guests has made it difficult for others, so she gives the money to Nobin. Feeling moved, he promises to return her 5,000 rupees someday. The next day, a man from the city came to the market. The man was named Bani and was in charge of patenting something. When he reaches Shandu's shop, Nobin and Mahesh are being chased by time to make an order for upper caste family sweets, so they ignore his arrival. Not long after, Shandu, who was about to sneeze, accidentally spilled a medicinal pill into the sweet mixture. He tries to take the pill but fails as it is mixed with the dough. He was furious because the order had to be delivered, so he could only pray that the sweets being made would not cause any side effects without telling Nobin and Mahesh what he had done. The scene then changed where the Thanksgiving event took place. The guests initially seemed to enjoy the sweets served, but not long after, the guests actually vomited because of the poisoning. Afterward, the guest who did not accept it beat Nobin, while Shandu just ran away. Unlike Shandu, Mahesh, who saw this, protected Nobin from angry guests. After the incident, Shandu's shop was finally closed because it had not paid the rent, and the rest of the money that Madhu had given him was forced to compensate the shop's customers. Since then, Nobin decided to stop making sweets and cakes because he felt very disappointed and desperate. Two weeks later, Nobin chose to lock himself up at home. Soon after, Mahesh comes to comfort him, but it is in vain. It turned out that his behavior also irritated his mother. She made fun of Kirad by saying that if she was in Kirad's position, she would choose to end her life instead of just watching her husband be insulted by others. Hearing that, Kirad was offended by her words, so Kirad left the house without saying anything. Knowing his wife didn't come home, Nobin went to find his wife. When he arrived at an old building, Nobin, who never found his wife, wept bitterly because he could not be a useful husband. 
Kirat, in the old building, clearly couldn't bear to see Nobin in despair. She went out to meet Nobin and said she would return as long as he wanted to rise from failure. She continued to say that she doesn't care about what people say and will always be by his side. It turned out that her words touched Nobin, then he hugged her and promised not to disappoint her. After that, Nobin went to find capital to open his own shop. Unfortunately, he did not have a guarantee to be mortgaged to get capital. When he returned home, Kirat unexpectedly gave jewelry from her parents to be pawned so that Nobin could get money. At first, Nobin refused because he would feel ashamed of Kirat's parents, but Kirat explained that she felt sincere if it was for his success. Finally, Nobin returned to the pawn shop, but he cancelled his intention because he heard that the interest was high and the pawn goods were at risk of not being returned. Nobin finally goes to Queen's house and hopes Queen will buy his wife's jewelry, but she is angry to see his actions, which she thinks are sinful because they sell their parents' gifts. However, Queen knows that Nobin is talented, so she gives a gold coin to him to build a business. Seeing that, Nobin is surprised by her kindness, and he can only cry with emotion and promise to return it. The scene changes and shows Kalidus, who is surprised when he finds out that Nobin will open his own shop opposite the Kalidus shop. Meanwhile, he looked for equipment for his shop, accompanied by Mahesh. A year passed, and two people from the next village were looking to buy cakes at Nobin's shop. But because it was quiet, the two people became hesitant and chose to buy at the Kalidus shop. Soon after, Mahesh told Kira that Nobin had only focused on making cakes that looked like the full moon, as well as some new types of cakes, even though the tongues of the villagers were only interested in old types of cakes. Hearing that, Kirat was annoyed and tried to make Nobin more realistic with the situation. If he continued like that, their shop would actually go bankrupt. But Nobin said it was better to go bankrupt rather than copy the cakes made by Kalidus. His words made Kirat even angrier, and she threw his dough. The scene then changes and shows Nobin calming down by the river. He suddenly saw Curran's band that was going to entertain a family from England, then they invited him to come along. On the other hand, Kalidas actually feels anxious because Nobin makes a lot of new types of cakes, so he is worried that Nobin will overthrow his business. When they arrived at the family's house, Nobin replaced Curran with singing because he suddenly had inflammation. Unexpectedly, Nobin sang the song with great appreciation and impressed the people who heard it. The host, who felt very entertained, served him and the others a snack. When Nobin tasted it, he looked surprised because the snack was soft, savory, and delicious. After that, he asked how to make the snack, and because Nobin had entertained him well, the host named, Mr. Paulo, was happy to invite him to the kitchen to teach him how to make the snack. Soon after, Mr. Paulo mixes the ingredients with water fermented milk. Seeing this, Nobin thanked him because he realized his mistake all this time. Arriving at the house, Nobin did not realize that Kirat was worried about him because there was no news all day. Afterward, he met his wife and promised he would make a cake like Kalidas if he failed this time. Armed with the recipe Mr. Paulo gave, he practiced it accompanied by his wife and Mahesh. When the batter was poured into the pan and didn't break, Mahesh shouted with joy that Nobin had succeeded. The cake is round, like a full moon, so Nobin named the cake Rasagala. When it was cooked, he gave the cake to Kira to try, and she burst into tears because she had never tasted such a delicious cake. The next day, Mahesh proudly gave Rasagala to Kalidas to taste, but Kalidas insulted him and refused. Mahesh tries to be patient, then tells Kalidas that Rasagala is made of long nights without sleep, sacrifice, tears, and love, so Rasagala is the answer to all their struggles. The scene changed and showed a nobleman crossing Nobin's village. The nobleman's son looked cranky because he was thirsty, so he asked the coachman to stop for a while. Seeing Kalidas' shop look crowded, they prefer to go to Nobin's quiet shop because they don't want to mingle with lower caste people. After that, Nobin served drinks to the nobleman's son. Nobin realized that his father would reject his Rasagala, but not his son, so he offered Rasagala to the boy. Seeing his son highly praised Nobin's Rasagala, his father tried it, and unexpectedly, the nobleman bought all of his Rasagala as souvenirs. The villagers became interested in buying after seeing a nobleman who had bought up Nobin's Rasagala. Since then, his shop has become crowded, and Kalida's shop has become quiet. The scene changed, showing Rasagala has now become a cake for all castes. One day, a toilet cleaner was laughed at and shunned by a villager named Bippin. Shortly after, Nobin helps Bippin, who is in trouble. He even recruits Bippin to become an employee at his cake shop. The scene then changes, showing Mahesh, who is happy because he got a gift of clothes from Nobin. Besides that, Nobin has managed to repay his debt to Queen and Madhu. Nobin and Kirad's life was more beautiful because they were blessed with a son named Krishna. A few years later, thanks to the nobles who used to stop by Nobin's shop, his Rasagala cake became known throughout India. Many people from other provinces came to make Rasagala, and he warmly welcomed them all without hesitation because he did not hesitate to give the recipe. The scene then changes, showing Nobin being picked up by an English family servant to teach Rasagala to Mr. Paul. On the other hand, Bani comes back and meets Kirad. Bani says that if Nobin patents the recipe, then people have to pay royalties to him first if they want to make Rasagala and if he doesn't patent, then someone else will patent it. 
so Nobin will instead pay for his own invention. Soon after, Kirod tells this, but Nobin refuses to patent Rasagala for fear of being considered insincere and manipulating people just for money. Hearing this, an angry Kirod went with Krishna and would not return if he had not patented Rasagala. On the other hand, the curious Kalidas finally tells Hemin to order Rasagala. But, Nobin actually came to meet Kalidas and said that he had never considered Kalidas an enemy. He just wants to ask for the blessing of Kalidas. After that, he offers Rasagala to Kalidas. Kalidas then tasted Rasagala shyly, but when he saw that Kalidas' expression looked normal, Nobin decided to return. Unexpectedly, he begged Nobin to teach him. After being told the recipe by Nobin, the cunning Kalidas secretly wanted to patent Rasagala. However, it failed because Kalidas' Rasagala was not as good as Nobin's. One day, Nobin advised Bipin to be polite, even to a beggar, and it turned out that the beggar was Shandu. Shandu was crying and apologized to Nobin and told Nobin about his mistake. After hearing this, Nobin was not angry and happy because what caused the poisoning was hard drugs and not sweets made by him. It turned out that Bekunta is Shandu's real name, then Nobin makes a new kind of sweet with the name of Bekunta Bog. After that, Nobin met Kirad because he wanted the first person to taste Bekunta Bog to be her. Finally, she was forced to taste it and looked happy because it was delicious. Nobin explained that even when people worldwide tried to imitate his recipe, he still believed that no one could match his homemade taste. Since then, Nobin and Kirad's relationship has been on the mend. This film is based on the true story of Nobin Chandra Dash, a Rasagala cake maker who died at the age of 80 in 1925 and became one of the richest people in Kolkata despite never attending school. Apart from Rasagala and Bacon to Bog, Nobin makes many cakes and sweets. All the cakes and sweets currently sold across India are derived mostly from Nobin Chandra Dash's recipe. The moral that can be learned from this movie is to make it a habit to always work hard and be diligent in doing something because the results will not betray the effort.